welcome back to Angie Seams and Pockets, and I am so excited for today's video because I'll be torturing Pugsley today. Not really, but I'll be dressing him up, so I think to him it's the same difference. Today I'll be making a cat neck ruffle inspired by the Elizabethan period, so my little fluffy boy is gonna look like an Elizabethan pompous frat boy. And with that introduction out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera to the table so you guys can see what I'm doing, grab some materials, and we can get started on this amazing cat torture project. Alright, so to start off, I'm going to take some white fabric, I'm going to find my edge, and I'm using just a cotton woven fabric. And so basically what I'll be doing is I'm going to be creating a really long strip. You are also welcome to use ribbon. I just don't have any ribbon currently that's white enough for this project so I'm using some fabric. And then if you have a woven fabric, the best trick to creating a perfect strip is to go ahead and measure out the length you need. For me I'm just going to do two and a half inches, snipping it, and then just ripping it apart. And with that, I have my strip. Now, I might need more than one strip for my project. At the moment, I'm not sure how long I need, and this is something to keep in mind when creating this. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna start off with one, and then I can cut myself another strip if need be. So then I'm taking my washable marker, I'm marking out an inch and a half between the marks. I thought I had the camera on, but apparently I didn't. So that's just what I've been doing. Um, I'm hoping that the other footage <laughs> didn't get deleted as well. And then I'm just gonna leave the rest of it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make two more strips because now that I'm marking this out, I feel like this is not gonna be enough. Um, it's really hard to know exactly how much fabric you're going to need for your project because it all depends on how big of a neck ruff you're going to be making. So I'm just going to go ahead and make two more and then we can meet back here so I can show you how to do the sewing part. Now that I have my extra strip cut out, it is going to be time to put the two of them together. So I'm going to do a quick straight stitch down the side here. This will create a even longer strip of rectangle fabric. And now that they're attached, it is time to start making the ruffles. First I'm going to trim off this excess. For the next step, you're going to need to do a lot of hand sewing. Um, I tried to figure out a way to do this on the sewing machine and none of the methods I tried worked. So hand sewing it is, and I guess if any of you watching this are beginners, this will be easier for you because you won't even need to have a sewing machine to be able to make this. So go ahead and get some thread to match the color of the fabric or ribbon that you're using for your ruffle. Cut, get like a nice bit unraveled, grab your sewing needle and thread it through. And one little trick that I do when it comes to threading your needle is to bring the needle towards the thread instead of bringing the thread towards your needle, you're more likely to hit your target and thread it on the first try. And then to finish off the edge of your thread, go ahead and wrap your needle like three to four times around it, grab it with your nail, pull through, and you should have a perfect little loop on the end of your thread. Now, coming back to my ruffles, I'm going to start off on one edge. So I'm going to start off by taking the first dot that I made, securing it several times over with a thread, um, just to create my first anchor point, and then I'm going to be skipping dots. So I started off on this dot, skip this dot, and then instead of going through the dot and out, I'm just going to actually catch the... Um, like fold it and catch just the smallest bit of it, just like this, and then go ahead, skip the next dot, catch this one, just the smallest bit, pull through, and you're gonna slowly start to see the beginning of a ruffle. And then every like third dot that I do, I also like to come back and just secure it an extra time over. This will ensure that if um, something happens with my thread and it clips, it doesn't completely fall apart. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue this for the rest of my strip. 
All right, so I'm on strip two now, and as you can see, the ruffle collar is starting to take its little shape. Um, it's a little messy on the underside because I haven't sewn that side yet, but on the top, it's starting to look exactly how it's supposed to, and you can see the ruffles on the edges. Um, I am definitely feeling like I'm probably gonna need at least a third strip here, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that one out and attach it on. So I'm just gonna keep doing exactly what I'm doing. And honestly, I feel like this is such an easy project for a beginning sewing person. In the end, it looks so complicated. So it looks like you put a lot of effort and a lot of work, which you technically did, but the technique is so simple and easy and anyone who knows how to take a needle and push it through fabric should be able to make something of sorts that is similar to this. So off camera, I went ahead and measured my cat's neck just to see how big of a rough I'd need to make. And it turns out his neck is almost 10 inches big, so I'm probably actually gonna stick to 10 inches just to make sure that he's comfortable when he's wearing it. And I'm currently standing on, I just started my third strip, and I'm at about three inches. So I think this project is gonna take a lot more than three to four strips. So away I go, sewing these roughs together. And just like that, I have my 10 inches of ruffles. So now it's time to do the other side. And this side is going to be easier because I'm not going to be doing the looping to secure the pieces between themselves. The reason I did that is to make sure that this doesn't um, come apart. Um, so the other side should be a lot simpler. ruffle collar is almost done. The next step is to figure out how I'm going to attach it to my cat. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some elastic. I'm going to cut a, two uh, pretty small strips because I don't need a lot to tie it up. And then I'm just going to hand sew it on to the corners of the top of the ruffle collar. So my ruffle collar ended up having an underside where you can see some of these rougher edges and then it has a top pretty side. So I'm just going to do it right into the corners of here so I can tie it up and have my cat wear it. And you could totally use ribbon here again instead of elastic. I just had elastic ready on hand. That's what I just determined I was going to use. Honestly, anything that can kind of tie up the end of it would work. So time to grab my cat. And here you go. Here's my fancy little pompous little boy. Yes, you are. Look at him. I'm gonna let him run around the apartment and I'm gonna see if I can capture any really fun shots. If you wanna. <laughs> nope, he doesn't wanna, he's sitting on my lap. And with that, I am done dressing up, I mean, torturing my cat. Um, he's, he'll be fine. He's a good boy. He doesn't mind that much. He's just currently sleeping in the corner and uh, I feel like I've tortured him enough as is for the day. So I'll just let him be. But I hope you enjoyed this video and if you make a rough collar for your own cat, I would love to see pictures of it. Thank you all so much for joining me here today. Go forth and sew my lovelies and I'll see all of you in my next video. Bye!